This is uh, AB exam review for the AP exam. Um, this is on uh, just miscellaneous topics. Uh, also kind of a last minute uh, review for certain topics that uh, I want to focus on as well as um, topics that uh, we haven't seen in a while. Um, and uh, the first up is definite and indefinite integral problems uh, involving u substitution. I feel like um, uh, we've been having some trouble uh, with these types of problems, so I wanted to kind of get us um, more practice with these types. Uh, now, most uh, indefinite and, and um, definite integral problems on the AP exam will be u substitution, but that is not... Um, that's not going to be the first thing that we check for, right? The first thing that we check for is can we expand, can we simplify, can we apply power rule? Um, and, uh, and if that doesn't work, then we go to look for use substitution. So in this case, uh, we can't expand using power rule, so we, um, we want to look to see how we can use use substitution to solve this problem. And uh, our u value looks like um, an appropriate uh, guess would be uh, what's inside the radical, so 9 minus x squared. So we let that be the u value. Our derivative is negative 2x. Our dx is du over negative 2x. And uh, when we go through u substitution, uh, the reason for u substitution is that uh, u uh, acts as an uh, intermediate variable uh, that allows us to check to see whether uh, everything is going to work out in terms of are the x's going to cancel out? Is this method going to work? Are we going to be left with uh, something that we have a rule for? And so um, we're going to make our substitution in for uh, the 9 minus x squared. So uh, that gets replaced with u. The x is going to stay for now. That's not going to get canceled out yet. And then du uh, gets replaces, uh, or dx gets replaced with du over negative 2x. And once we have that, we see that um, a negative 1 half gets pulled out. And then we have to apply the rule for u to the um, 1 half in the denominator, which would pull to the numerator. So u to the negative 1 half becomes um, u to the 1 half over 1 half and plus c. Uh, we pull the 2 out in front, and the negatives, uh, negative 1 half and 2 cancels out, leaving us with negative root u. And then the u value gets replaced with 9 minus x squared. Uh, notice that um, the the 9 minus x squared produces a negative 2x, which produces a negative 1 half. So basically, any u value uh, is going to um, any u value is going to produce a uh, a, a coefficient uh, that is going to be the reciprocal of whatever we see with our derivative. Okay. Okay. Let's look at number two, and I think it's going to be more clear here um, uh, what. Uh, what's going to result. And uh, if you look at this problem, let's ignore the uh, uh, definite, um, the, uh, the bounds for now. Let's just think about this problem in terms of e to the negative 2x. Now the integral of e to the negative 2x, okay, let's think of it in terms of e to the u. The integral of e to the u is simply e to the u plus c. Now look at this exponent. This exponent is more than just an x. So what that means is when you find the uh, indefinite integral or definite integral, you're going to be expecting a coefficient that's going to be, um, that's going to counter um, uh, uh, this negative 2x. And uh, what's going to be produced is always going to be the reciprocal of whatever this value is. So negative 2x will produce a negative 1 half, and negative 1 half uh, is going to just um, uh, attach itself to whatever the integral is. And the integral of e to the u is e to the u, so um, the, the rule is not going to change. However, because that u value is more than an x, that's going to be accounted for with the coefficient. So keep that in mind, and hopefully that will allow you to keep from making um, um, careless mistakes on the exam. So once we have, um, now if you want to go through u substitution and find it, uh, the indefinite integral, that's perfectly fine. But um, this would save you some time if you see that, all right, I need something that is going to be the reciprocal of this uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, counter with this, uh, this u value. Okay. Plug in the upper and lower bounds. Upper bound will give us negative 1 half e to the negative 2. The lower bound will give us negative 1 half e to the 0. Notice that there's also another negative here that will cancel out. 
So we're left with negative 1 over 2e squared plus 1 half. And if the um, uh, multiple choice uh, asks you, uh, pr pr uh, produces uh, a solution in terms of uh, common denominator, then we have to be able to make that adjustment. So negative 1 plus e squared over 2e squared. Okay, number three, uh, this is a perfect example where we want to always check to see whether uh, we can rely simply on power rule. And here we can because we can just expand the numerator. And once we have that, we have only one term in the denominator. So we can split this up into the sum of three fractions. So y squared over 2y, 2y over 2y, 1 over 2y. And we can now treat each like a separate problem. So this reduces to be 1 half y. This reduces to be 1. And this reduces to be 1. Um, a 1 half times 1 over y. So the first term, uh, we can use power rule, so y squared over 2. The second term, we can use power rule. The third term, 1 over y, becomes natural log of the absolute value of y. So don't forget the plus c. And we simplify this to match with um, choice a, y squared over 4 minus y plus 1 half natural log of the absolute value of y plus c. Okay, number 4, natural log uh, quantity uh, natural log of x quantity cubed over x. Uh, we can expand uh, using just power rules, so um, we may have to go through use substitution. But anytime we see this notation, we want to write it in something that is more um, descriptive. So we're going to write it as natural log quantity uh, cubed. And here it's more noticeable that we have to go through u substitution and we want the u value to be the val uh, what's inside the parentheses. So we're going to have to go through u substitution. Make sure um, everything checks out. Make sure that um, our x's cancel out and we can determine whether u substitution is going to work for us. So our u value is natural log of x. Derivative is 1 over x. Cross multiply dx is x du. So our first um, step is we're going to try and replace natural log of x with the u value and replace dx in terms of u and see if any see if the leftover variable will cancel out. So we get u cubed over x times now dx gets replaced with x times du. So x times du goes here. The x's cancel out, so we're left with u cubed over three. Uh, sorry, just u cubed. And we do have a rule for u cubed because that's simply power rule. So that gives us u to the fourth over four plus c. Uh, but we're doing definite integral, so we just have u to the fourth over four, and that's simply natural log of x quantity to the fourth power. Uh, plug in our upper and lower bound, so we get uh, natural log of e, which is one. So one fourth minus one fourth times natural log of one. So one fourth minus zero is simply one fourth. So that is our answer. Okay, number five. Uh, the equivalent representation for the definite integral of the integral of 2x cosine of x squared dx is, and we're going to try to match it with one of these problems that's um, halfway finished. Uh, so here you can see that uh, we have to go through u substitution. We do see um, a trig function, so cosine of x squared. We want this x squared to hopefully cancel out with this 2x, so we're going to let this x squared be the u value. Solve for du over dx, which is 2x. dx is du over 2x. We make our substitutions. The 2x stays for now, cosine. x squared gets replaced with u, and dx gets replaced with du over 2x. And the 2x cancels out. We're left with integral of cosine of u. Now we stop here because that is our answer choices. Our answer choices are all in terms of cosine of u. We just need to figure out what our upper and lower bounds are. Now, because we everything's in terms of u, that means we have to convert our bounds to be in terms of u as well. And our conversion formula is um, given by uh, this um, uh, uh, given by this u equals x squared. Okay, so this assigned value for u um, will also produce will also act as the conversion uh, from um, for our bounds. So uh, initially our x, our lower bound is 1, but we plug 1 in for x, and we get u is equal to 1. Initially, our upper bound is 3, but we plug 3 in for x. 3 squared is 9, so that means our lower and upper bound converts to be 1 and 9 because our integrand is in terms of u. So we will need to be able to match our bounds in terms of u as well. Hey, okay, number 6, uh, the integral of cosine of 4x. Now, we know the rule for cosine of u is... Integral of cosine of u is sine of u plus c. 
However, we see that 4x means that there's going to be something that will be produced, right? And we can always think of it as uh, the reciprocal of whatever you see here. So the reciprocal of 4x is simply 1 fourth, or reciprocal of 4 is simply 1 fourth, and we get 1 fourth sine, um, sine of 4x plus c. And this is kind of a shortcut method um, to know that, that 4x will produce a 1 fourth. And if you want to go through use substitution, you can also do that. And uh, you see that there is a pattern that's going to show up with all these use substitution problems, especially the, the simpler ones that involve just a, uh, a linear um, a u value or um, a, a linear uh, function. So um, answer choice D is the correct solution.